We've been talking about factors of safety for bolted connections, and we're going to move into factors of safety for fatigue in a moment. But before we do that, we want to talk briefly about what preload we should use. It's kind of an important consideration to understand what the FI should be. When we go into fatigue factors of safety, we will be able to say much more clearly what FI we want in a bolted connection. And that is we wanna choose a preload that enhances the factor of safety against fatigue failure. But before we get there, there are some rules of thumb for preload and they are as follows. If you want to reuse the bolts, then we want FI to be less than or equal to about 75% of the proof load. If we want a permanent connection, then we set the preload to be approximately 90% of the proof load. And remember, the proof load is just the proof strength times the threaded area. So there's some basic ideas about what we should do when we're applying preloads to the bolts. If we want to reuse them, we stick at 75% of the proof strength. If we want permanent joint, we can go to 90%. But now we want to talk a little bit about fatigue failure. And in order for us to do this, we have to consider that there are stress concentration factors at, at the root root radius for a washer faced bolt up here at the top. They are at the thread runout and they are where the thread goes into the nut at the bottom side. So there are high stresses in those regions and failure is likely to occur in one of those places. Most of the failures occur down here at the, the nut. When we apply a load to a bolted connection, we've already talked about how there is load sharing between the compressed member and the bolt itself. And now we want to sort out how we're going to take advantage of that load sharing to prevent fatigue failure of the bolts. Now you can imagine that if we have to figure out what the stress concentration factors are at each of these three locations, and we have to determine where it is most likely to fail in a given bolted connection, we have to find a fully corrected endurance strength as well. And that can be hard to do. Lucky for us, there are some values of fully corrected endurance strength out there for both the SAE and the ISO grade bolts listed in table 817 from Shigley. So if we can use these fully corrected endurance strengths, then we don't have to worry about stress concentration factors, and we also don't have to worry about Marin factors when we try to determine what the endurance strength would be. So this is the best case scenario. If we have fully corrected endurance strengths, we can use those immediately in our fatigue calculations. But the first thing that we need to do when we start to talk about bolt fatigue is we need to consider the fluctuating load that can be applied to the bolts. So we're gonna have a max and a minimum applied external load, which means that the bolt load is going to have a max that is associated with P max and a min that is associated with P min. So we get this fluctuating fluctuation if we have a fluctuating force that's applied to the member. And now what we need to do is we need to find a stress amplitude. So our goal is to find a stress amplitude and a mean stress in the bolts. So right off the bat, you know that we have to divide these by the threaded area. So we want to take this entire thing and divide by the threaded area. So we get a sigma bolt max and a sigma bolt minimum. Then you know that the stress amplitude is going to be one half sigma max minus sigma min, and the mean stress is going to be one half sigma max plus sigma min. Right, so if you look at these two equations, you can see that if we take the difference between the maximum and the minimum, the Fi term is going to fall out. And so what we would find is that the stress amplitude is just going to be equal to one half P max minus P min times C divided by AT. Well, that would simply be equal to C P A divided by 2 AT, where the load amplitude is one half P max minus P min. So if we do that calculation, we find that the stress amplitude is just given by C times P A divided by A T, where P A is as given before. The mean stress is going to be one half sigma max plus sigma min. And so the mean stress is going to be equal to 
Fi over At plus C over At times P mean. And this is just sigma I plus C P mean over At, where P mean is simply one half P max plus P min. So if we have this mean stress and the stress amplitude, then we can go on to a Goodman diagram. We've taken the time to carefully calculate both our stress amplitudes and our mean stresses. We found our stress amplitude right here, and we found that our mean stress was given by this equation here. We plot that mean stress and that stress amplitude on a Goodman diagram. The Goodman diagram allows us to determine a fatigue factor of safety by correcting for the mean stresses that are applied. You will recall that we have an alternating stress axis, sigma A, plotted against a mean stress axis, sigma M. We truncate the mean stress at the ultimate tensile strength of the material, and we truncate the alternating stress at the endurance limit for the material. And now we come out here for our bolt and we realize we are starting at a preload of Fi over At. We then apply additional load, and remember that additional load is a fraction of the applied load, and we have already calculated what that mean applied load is. So we move over in this direction to enhance the mean stress, and we come up in this direction with a stress amplitude and that identifies point B, and this represents a load line line for proportional increases in sigma M and sigma A. We are trying to find where that load line intersects the Goodman line. So we need the equation for the Goodman line and we need the equation for the load line. We set those two equal to each other so that we can find the stress amplitude associated with point C. We divide that stress amplitude by the stress amplitude that we are applying with the external load applied to the bolt member. We take the ratio of those two, a ratio of SA to sigma A. Sigma A is what we are applying to the bolt. SA has to do with the intersection of the Goodman line. The load line is easy to find. It has a slope of sigma A, that's the rise, over the run, which would be sigma M minus sigma I. So this is the slope. We are moving to the right to the point SM, but we are moving to the right by an amount SM minus sigma I. And so that would identify the point SA on the load line AC. The Goodman line, easy to solve for that because the Goodman equation is simply SA over SE plus SM over SUT is equal to 1. We rearrange that to solve for SA and we get this equation. We set equation A equal to equation B. We solve for SM. Then we plug SM back into this equation. That gives us this equation right here. And if we take that equation, equation and divide by sigma A, we get the fatigue factor of safety. You'll notice that all we need to do is move the sigma A over to this side of the equation, and that will give us SA divided by sigma A. That's the fatigue factor of safety. Here is the fatigue factor of safety that we are going to need when we do calculations for bolted connections. What we will need to do is find SE, which is the fully corrected endurance strength. We're gonna have to look that up. We're gonna need SUT for the bolt. We're gonna have to look that up. We're going to need to calculate the stress amplitude. We need to calculate our initial load, and we need to calculate our mean stress. When we have all of those, we can plug them into equation 838 and get a fatigue factor of safety.